Hi there, this is David at Winco, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on using Bartender to make UID labels. And in this case, I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet to populate the label. And you can see that I have um, headings for my columns, for page, for obviously for page code, the part number of the item, the serial number of the item. And in this case, although it's not part of the UID, we're going to print the NSN number on the label as well. Just one thing to um, be careful of is that because Excel has a habit of dropping zeros from the front of numbers, it's a really good idea to format all of the cells in the spreadsheet as text rather than just as general or as numbers so that what's printed on the label is what we need. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've, you can see I've populated my spreadsheet with three um, labels using um, our cage code, the part number, the serial number, and the NSN. What I have to do is to save the spreadsheet and close it. Okay, Bartender's not happy if Excel is open. So let's go into Bartender, and I'm using um, Bartender Automation. And as you can see, we're starting off with a blank sheet, and I click on New, and I'm going to start with a blank label format. And the first thing that Bartender asks us to do is to choose the printer and that's because the label is going to be different depending on the resolution of the printer and the features that it has and our printer this time is going to be a Datamax M class M4308 which is a good machine for UID labels I click on next and I'm going to use custom settings for this particular one and we can choose at this point if these labels are single labels on the roll or if they're multiple labels across in this case it's going to be a single one and next um, step of the wizard is is there a margin on either side um, normally there is but there's a, an area of just liner on the side and I usually just leave this as the defaults um, my label will be a rounded rectangle rather than just a rectangle because the die that cuts the labels has rounded corners so, so that, makes some, that makes some sense and here is where I put in the size and my width is going to be it's, the label is actually going to be an inch by half an inch so my total width is 1.1, including those margins on either side, and 0.5 here. So I click on to next, and basically I finished. Um, wait a second, and our label should appear. Okay, so here we go. And basically what we're going to have on the label are four text fields showing those three pieces of data from the spreadsheet and the UID barcode, which I'm going to stick over here on the right side. So we'll start off with the barcode. I click on the barcode icon, bring it down onto the label, and I get a really huge default code 39. I can double click on here to open the properties, go into my barcode, and I'm going to choose, since it's a UID, the data matrix barcode. And you can see I have some choices in here. I can choose the X dimension, which is the size of the little squares that make up the UID code. Mill standard 130 says that this must be between 7.5 and 25 mil. I'm going to set this at 10 mil. I like that size. The symbol type for DOD needs to be ECC 200. This encoding thing, I just leave that as the default. And I can also change from a square, an automatically formatted square, to a rectangle and a whole bunch of different ones. I'm going to leave it as auto square, at least for the moment and I'm not going to do anything else, I just want to make my barcode which as you can see has disappeared off the screen completely and I'm going to bring it back just with these centering tools and shove this over here where I kind of wanted it to be. Okay, so there's a barcode and now let's look at some text. I click on the text icon, move my cursor onto the label and you'll see immediately I come up with um, a sample text that's rather large for what I, for what I need so I'm going to choose my font, and being particularly boring, I tend to use Arial most of the time for my fonts. So let me just see if I can find that in the list. And 12 point is going to be too big. It's not going to fit very well. I'm going to make this just 7 point. And move this onto the label so that I can at least see it. Okay, so there's, my, there's one um, text object. I'm going to copy it and do a little bit of... Um, instant copying and pasting here and just get my four fields on the label kind of where I want them to be. And then I'll do a bit of fine tuning and get these more or less how I want them after we've got them there. So we'll paste these. OK, 
okay and just quickly select all of them and I can using the alignment tools on this side I can line them up get them kind of where I want them and I can space them out um, a little bit more evenly so, okay that's summing how they, they will look so now we need to start thinking in terms of real data and the first thing I've got to do now is connect my label to my spreadsheet and this is the um, icon for the database tool database connection wizard so I'm going to go into here and just go through this step by step we're using Excel um, click on next and here is where I browse for my spreadsheet so it's always a good idea to remember where your spreadsheet is and what you called it and my one I know was called UID sheet so I choose that there's a button here that says test connection and it says success which is a wonderful word so we go into next and I just choose which of the tables um, my Excel produces these three tabs by default and I'm just choosing the first one of those I click on finish and if I want to see what's in my spreadsheet I can click on browse and there's my information so that's looking good so now down to the serious business of actually making the UID code itself and I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail as to how the UID code is actually made up that's probably the subject for another tutorial so just take it on trust that what I'm doing is what the standards um, says if, if you don't mind so what I'm doing I'm going into data source and then into advanced because that lets me put in a number of substrings into my label and being a UID code all UID codes start off with the same um, header characters which is an open bracket close parentheses greater than symbol and the next symbol that goes in is the ASCII record separator I click on this little symbol thing here and wait patiently for a second or two and a list of special characters appears and what I would do if I was doing this for the first time is I'd go down here until I find record separator and bartender very conveniently keeps um, a little list of recently used ones so my RS, my record separator is here, I double click on that and you can see it's brought it into the field here. Now I know that this is I'm um, using data identifiers so I put in a 06 followed by a group separator and that's going to be followed by the data identifier for cage code which is 17V and I'm now finished with that particular substring what I'll do now is go to my next data source which is going to be a database field and because I've connected my label to the spreadsheet you can see the headers from those um, columns in the spreadsheet appear under the field name so I just choose cage and that will be um, where I put my cage code so I go to the next substring that one is going to be screen data again so this is going to be fixed data and I don't want it to say sample text I do want it to be a group separator so I go back to here I choose my group separator and that's going to be followed by 1P which is the data identifier for part number so if I start my next substring it's going to be a database field and that's going to be the one that I call part for part number after that I start another substring and we're back to screen data for this one let me get rid of what's in there already and man it's my computer works really slowly today it's yet another one of those group separators followed by um, the letter S which is the code for serial number we'll start a new substring and its data its data source is going to be a database field and it's going to be serial for the serial number so looking good so far and then finally I have one more substring to do um, this one is going to be fixed so it's going to be screen data and I get rid of sample text in there and click on my little symbol thing again um, I wish there was a way to keep this symbol thing open to do this but I haven't found it yet so this one's going to have in it a record separator and the ASCII end of transmission character I click on OK and here's the UID mark so so far so far so good other than the thing I forgot so we're going to go back into the properties and what I'm going to do 
is to assign a share name to each of my um, variable fields in here. And I'm going to stick to the same as the database. So I'll have a share name for the cage code called cage, a share name for the part number called part, and a share name for the serial number called serial. And you'll see in a moment when we do the text fields as to why that is. OK, so our UID code is, is actually done. Now we need to focus on the, on the text fields. So I open up the properties here, go into data source. And the way I'm going to format these, let's go into, into advanced and get rid of the sample text, is I'm going to put the um, data identifier in the, front, in the front of these rows. So for the cage code, for instance, I'm going to have my 17V in parentheses followed by a space, then we'll have our data source will be a database field with the share name cage code, cage. Okay, so there's my cage code done already. I go into the next one, whoop, which is going to data source and advanced. And my first one is going to be 1P for part number. Oops. Let's put the parentheses into there. 1P, parentheses, space, and I choose my database field, and it's going to be, I can choose it from the share name, from the drop down box, part number in there. And then my next one, there always seems to be one more for some, for some reason. My next one is, again, we go into, into advanced, and get rid of sample text. And in parentheses, we're going to have the letter S for serial number, followed by a space. And we're going to choose serial for here. So I have one with a serial number. And then finally, the final one is going to be the NSN number. And I'm just going to have this one as a database field. I choose the item, the NSN, click on OK, Ooh, 